Hi, my name is Keith Wisson. I'm from the Sunshine Coast Re Reconciliation Group, Caliandra, and I'm, I'll put the, this either that or I'll put the, uh, put the harness on. Maybe I'd like to move around, so I might have the harness if I can. Men and women, brothers and sisters, good morning. I wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting today, that is the Gubby Gubby, as you can hear, or the Kabi Kabi, a couple of different pronunciations and spellings, and also the Undumbi people, who are also traditional owners of the land here, and all of the traditional owners of the land throughout Australia. In Doing this, my mind goes back to a meeting which our group had a couple of weeks ago on the Sunshine Coast with Australians for Native Title and Reconciliation, ANTAR. In that group of ANTAR, there were two people, uh, they were rather unexpected to me that they did arrive, but they were Barry and Les Malazar. Um, Barry is a, an Indigenous educator within the Catholic Indigenous Catholic um, system and also and um, is also connected with Griffith University. Les is a rather quite a remarkable man. Uh, Les was the director of the Queensland Department of Aboriginal Affairs. He is the chairperson of the Foundation for Aboriginal and Islander Research and Action, spokesperson for the National Indigenous Working Group and has been located in Geneva for about the last 10 years working on international human rights forums with the United Nations. Now I discovered immediately before the meeting that both Les and Barry were Gubby Gubby people, even though they may never have lived in, in this area. They're like and by ancestral, they are Gubby Gubby people. So I spoke to Les and I said, will you do the welcome to country, which is only done by people who are from that, that country. And because he rarely speaks in this area, it was, he, he probably had never done a welcome to country before, even though, even though I heard him in this university six years ago, but that's, that's another story. Um, anyway, he gave the welcome to country, and I thought that some of his words uh, are worth repeating today um, in this um, forum. Uh, our secretary took them down as well as she could, could. She did a great job, but I don't guarantee it's the, his exact words. Les welcomed everyone to the country, and he mentioned that the country was all things to do with the country, the eternal existence of all beings and features in the area. He said, if we follow the laws of the country, it will always be here, and that, that we must be able to recognise and understand what it is to be Indigenous, and that we will have a much more rewarding life if we follow that. He added that, that we must always respect other people's laws and traditions. In speaking of the eternal existence of all beings and features of the country, and always respecting other people's laws and traditions, I believe that Les was exactly summing up what this weekend um, multicultural uh, festival and today's forum is all about. So with that, um, I give my welcome to you all and proceed to reconciliation in general. In my mind, the task of a reconciliation group is to promote respect for the traditional and dispossessed custodians of this land, to take any action to advance community knowledge of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander history and culture, and to attempt to redress the wrongs and hurts, hurts which have been done to the Indigenous people. I'll give a quick run through of what our group in its nearly 10 years existence um, has done in this regard. Um, we have provided tutors for Aboriginal kids in schools and in the homes. We are still doing that. In fact, we are uh, trying to enlarge it once again. Uh, if anyone wants to do any tutoring, particularly in the Cloudra area, uh, one of the papers that I've got over here uh, is well worth looking at. You can use that same paper for a couple of other points that I'll mention. 
Uh, we sent a couple of delegates, uh, Indigenous delegates, to a Natural World Summit for Young Indigenous Women in New Zealand. We've had many letters published in the, in the Sunshine Coast daily. We attend the uh, Reconciliation Business Forums, which are conducted by the state government. We uh, did get a grant from uh, the Community Grants, what, I forget the name of it exactly, um, to run a, or, or to plan an Indigenous Film Festival in Caloundra. We worked on that for 12 months in conjunction with the university and it became so big that our narrow base could not support it. It did not eventuate. Maybe one day it will. I mean, we did a lot of groundwork there. And I think the thing that keeps us in the public eye, well, hang on, one other thing I'll mention. Um, I have here a bibliography of holdings in the Caloundra Library which relate to Indigenous life on the Sunshine Coast. Um, if anyone is studying Indigenous life on the Sunshine Coast, they are welcome to a copy of that. Um, that, that can be arranged. I can send it as a, as a, by email as, as a word attachment or in another way. But in addition to that, probably um, the most public uh, perception of us comes from the newsletters, which I have been producing for four and a half years. Uh, edition number 40 is down there. There's about 10 copies of that. And anyone that wants to receive it can get that free of charge by email, or if they want it posted, um, there'd be about a $5 a year fee for that. So that's what we do. Now, that's, that's on the sort of a narrow level. level. Incidentally, I've miniaturised all this apparatus. I can fit it on a piece of A4. I don't. Uh, I think that's an advance of technology of some sort. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll move to the larger scene. At the moment, or last week, anyway, the federal government was conducting uh, interstate, uh, multi-state discussion on the teaching of history in schools. Now that's a great idea and I am somewhat comforted by the fact that Jackie Huggins, Queensland historian and academic and uh, co-chair of Reconciliation Australia was on that committee. But with the federal government's track record on Aboriginal matters in recent years, I worry that they would be looking for a preconceived outcome and will probably attain the outcome. Because in that 10 years, land rights have been wound back. There was a bill passed through Parliament only last week which wound them back further. ATSEC was given the chop. The school aspens, now they were groups that we, uh, parent support groups, with which we as a reconciliation group could work and, and assist the students. Um, they were replaced by something so vast that I understand it to be unworkable. Um, any other advances have been wound back. The Bringing Them Home report on stolen generation was savagely and unfairly attacked by Mr. Ron Brunton. I think he was living at Butterham at the time, maybe he still does. Um, he is now on the board of the ABC. Um, all of the evidence of uh, atrocities, murders, uh, throughout the, the 19th century, um, Keith Windshuttle is analysing them as if he were a current lawyer. People, if you go and shoot 20 people, there isn't a precise written record. On this day, I shot 20 people and here is the evidence. So Keith Windshuttle busily denies that any of this ever happened. He's on the board of the ABC. All of this worries me. Uh, the, the government spent millions of dollars fighting the claims of Peter Gunner and Lorna Cabillo for compensation for being removed from their families. But because it's very difficult to prove after 60 years the precise motive of removal or the precise con consent or lack of consent of the parent, the judge said, well, look, I believe you but I cannot find in your favour. So I'm going to move to a larger scale again, and I've, I've proposed to have a look at, at Aboriginal history. Um, from another bit of perspective, I'll start with that. Um, I might just make a slide. Uh, 
create a visual presentation of, you know, a timeline. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, twelve, uh, twenty-four, thirty-six, forty-eight. That timeline, four times up and down this area, is a timeline of Abri uh, the Aboriginal um, occupation of this land. Now what, in that timeline, for the first 30,000 years, it was, the country was quite warm and, and, and moist, and I presume in that time, the Aboriginal people spread entirely throughout the land. And they survived ice ages, uh, extreme cold, the seas rose, and I consider their achievement to be one of the greatest feats of human fortitude in history. But on top of actually surviving, I make points, the quality of life was, was excellent and it was sustainable. There's something I wrote here a few years ago, I think I can uh, do no better than read it. Um, and I've got to use the word civilization which is a Western word, um, where the West would call it primitive, but I call it civil, civilization because it worked. I say they were the most successful civilization in human history. Successful because during a period of occupancy of some 50,000 years, 2,000 generations, the Aboriginal people had established themselves through the continent in thousands of self-regulating communities. A small number of languages, three or less, evolved into about 250, of which about 20 are actively spoken today. In spite of the diversity and distance, there remained a common thread across the continent. They were generally well-fed, healthy, adequately sheltered, rich in mythology, mythology, ceremony, art and culture, with an enforceable because respected system of law in a classless society with no apparatus of state, no police, no jails, and with power in the hands of the community. And except for the unthinkable tragedy of foreign attack, it was a society in which the people were in such indivisible harmony with the land and its creatures that it could have continued for another 50,000 years. But of course, it was attacked by a country, a civilized country, shall we say, which had participated in the world slave trade, which ripped 20 million Africans out of their country over 400 years. A society which came to Australia with guns and whips and gallows and hangman's nooses, and to establish a jail for its citizens because it could not handle its citizens in its own country. This, I presume, was civilization versus primitivism, but who was civilized? <laughs> so I would come after my 50,000 uh, 50, years, I come to this, 218 millimeters. That 218 millimeters on the same, same time scale represents um, the, the post-contact, uh, the period since 1788. So, in our history books, 99.59% covers that 218 years. Very, very little covers the, the, and that is half a percent of our human history. We will have achieved reconciliation when we look at the human history of this land, not as us and them. This is the path of reconciliation. In another context, a man visiting Russia said, I have seen the future and it works. Well, it didn't. But I say, we have seen the past and it works. And we can learn from that. Thank you.